Thank you, Vivian. Uh, because of time, and then you leave the question for the later part of the discussion. But after the two sessions of the planning and management, now we come to, the time to talk about more operation. And the topic of this uh, session is the role of the medical team. And the speaker is Dr. Chen Wu. Dr. Wu is the associate consultant of the accident and emergency department of the Queen University Hospital. Actually, this is not very nice to see him in the hospital. <laughs> but uh, you can see him around because he's been involved a lot in the sporting event. So that uh, if you join any of the major sporting events and then try to look for him, he is always there. He is currently working, uh, he is currently the chair of the Sports Medicine Committee of the Hong Kong College of Emergency Medicine for promoting the field of sports medicine within the medical profession through courses and also more important is the pitch size support for sport event like the Hong Kong set. So that uh, please join me to welcome Dr. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for introducing me. Uh, I recognize a lot of you are uh, 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 member of our uh, medical team. So uh, I'm just going to have a quick interview uh, what we have done. Okay. If I'm not, uh, can you hear me without the uh, microphone? Yeah, okay. So I can uh, free my hand and. Uh... Please. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, this talk, I'm going to talk about the role of the medical team. Uh, I've been involved in quite a few different uh, sports events. I've been invited by the uh, uh, organizer to provide medical sessions. Uh, I'm an emergency physician myself, so I use my um, medical skills and extend my service to the uh, sport field. Because of the uh, medical care standard is rising all the time, uh, in the domestic events or in the, especially in the international events, the standard is high. Uh, and also the welfare of the players and all the athletes are important, especially if you talk about the uh, professional player, they are expensive. So we need, uh, they need a lot of uh, profession to look after them. And uh, doctors is just one of them. In Hong Kong, uh, the standard is it's getting very high. Uh, a lot of international matches need doctors to be at the pitch side. And it is a mandatory uh, requirement now. And for us, we want to provide the best medical care we can do. In Hong Kong, uh, like Robbie said, uh, the medical service is renowned all over the world. Uh, usually, the medical teams are invited by the organizer, and this is the uh, rugby seven. We have a big medical team with different uh, people in there, with different specialties. We have to dis uh, you have to distinguish the, uh, the the medical team at the pitch side is different from the uh, team physician. The team position is, is uh, employed by the uh, sport team and they only look after their own team. But for us, we look after everybody in the sports event. The team usually consists of doctors, uh, nurses, physiotherapists, and first aider. And they are uh, specially trained uh, for the sports event. The match state doctor must be a, a qualified doctor, and usually we have a 
postgrad qualification, uh, like a sport medicine degree uh, with some extra uh, a medical uh, requirement, like uh, immediate care in sports, uh, basic life support, AC, uh, advanced care life support, uh, advanced trauma life support, or pre hospital trauma life support. These are uh, basic uh, requirements. And the most important thing is we practice our medicine outside our work, uh, normal working environment. In the active emergency department, you know, everybody you know, uh, does things like a, in an automatic mode. But in the sport field, the environment is different. So we have to be prepared how we work. Uh, we need to be flexible when we work in the pitch side. And also, we have to remember, because of the uh, medical legal issues now, we have to be properly insured. And we need to know, as Charles mentioned earlier, we need to understand the risk of the uh, sports. Uh, different sports have different risk. Rugby is one of the uh, highest risk uh, in sports events. There are a lot of different injuries. So the medical team requirement is higher than a lot of other sports events. Like uh, I cover the uh, Hong Kong Golf Open. The athletes itself, they hardly have any injuries. But when they come to us, they look for different support. They look, they look for psychological support rather than physical support. So we have to prepare for that as well. And normally, it's the official come to see us. The athletes, they think they have minor injuries you know, or they have minor issues. But sometimes the officials, they ask for uh, medical service more than the athletes themselves. And the disabled team, apart from the physical injury, we have to uh, 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 beware. Their medical issue is important. Also, like uh, the disabled uh, athletes, they might have a pressure sore issue. We have to be aware of that. We need to know the facility. This is a map uh, of the uh, 2008 uh, equestrian event in Hong Kong. Uh, it covers a four point something kilometer race track. Uh, it's important we know where the highest risk uh, located because we need to uh, allocate the medical service at different checkpoints. Uh, this is a cross-country event, you know, some of the barrier is quite high, it's as high as a person. So if the athlete or the rider fall from the horse above the uh, barrier, you're talking about three to four meters high. So the risk is high and during that event, there are six or seven ambulances located in a different area, and we have six medical teams located in, the, uh, in different areas, just in case if uh, something happens, so we can approach the uh, athletes quickly. This is Hong Kong Stadium. Yeah. If someone injured in in the middle of the field, we need to decide how we're going to get out of the stadium. I mean, we have to run from one end to the other end. The medical team normally stationed in this area. If someone injured here, we have to run across the field. So we need to be sure the match is uh, stopped. Uh, in order, you know, we can you know, carry our equipment running across the pitch and we don't want to run down by the rugby players because they are big, uh, big guys. And we need to know the local medical service. Yeah. Uh, Lucy will talk about the, uh, uh, the medical private medical service in Hong Kong and uh, a lot of uh, athletes Coming to Hong Kong, they, they don't understand the local service. Uh, we need to, uh, we need to uh, introduce them 
uh, if something happens, so we, we can let them know, you know, what we can provide. And we need to prepare the emergency uh, ambulance in in uh, rugby, uh, in rugby seven. We have two ambulances uh, provided by St. John. Uh, we what, we don't want to use the local uh, fire service because we, we don't want to uh, overload the uh, emergency service. And also, because the, the athletes, they are not Hong Kong citizens. If they want to go to the hospital, we need to understand uh, the, the, the admission rights to the uh, private hospital in Hong Kong. It's easy if we just send them to the public hospital. But for them, for the overseas athletes, uh, if they have to wait in the emergency department and they have to pay so much, so it's not fair to them. In most of the uh, instances, we rather send them to the private hospital and have a treatment there rather than to the local uh, 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 government hospital. I mean, need to tell them, you know, the medical uh, fees for overseas. So the, uh, the duty, we need to plan ahead. As Charles mentioned earlier, you know, we need to understand uh, the risk involved. Uh, we need to know the organization, uh, what to uh, check any protocol, any operation manual, and coordinate the medical service in the, in the area. Like uh, if you're talking about uh, 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 Joe Walker, because the event start from Sai Kung to Xun Wun Yin Long, it's a long distance. So along the, the route, there are different hospitals in more. So we need to inform all the hospitals, yeah, let them know the event starts. Or in Marathon, yeah, we, we uh, the organizer, will inform uh, we'll inform the HA and we need to prepare if something uh, comes to the hospital. And we coordinate the med medical service during the tournament. If someone wants uh, uh, x-ray or ultrasound, we need to coordinate that as well. And we need to support the team doctor or team physio. If the, the uh, visiting team, they have their own doctor or if they have their own physio, we need to uh, explain uh, the local service, the, if anything happened, what we can help. And we need to uh, understand any specific requirement during the uh, event. For example, in rugby, if someone has an uh, injury, the injury, they have bleeding, we need to stop, uh, we need to stop the player playing and uh, we can give the treatment. If we can stop the uh, bleeding, the player can go back to play, unlike uh, other sports events. Uh, and, uh, so this is, uh, we need to be aware of that. And uh, also, if someone injured, uh, the player is themselves may want to continue to play. But we need to enforce that uh, the player must be removed from the event. And we need to liaise with all the parties, you know, the organizer, the coach, uh, or the team, uh, the team doctor, we need to let them know what happened. The scale of the event is important uh, to know. If in, in Rugby 7, you know, the whole stadium is packed with 40,000 people. Although we only look after the athletes, if anything happened in the stadium, we are the first people to, to, to go to, to attend the, uh, the injured uh, spectator or the sick uh, spectator. And the cycling event is the same. Because the scale, you know, the, the area it covers can be uh, quite big, you know, from one side of the country uh, to, to the other side. So we need to uh, know the route and how we're going to uh, transport the, uh, the medical personnel to the uh, uh, incident site. And we need to designate the road of the medical team. And the team consists of many uh, personnel. Uh, this is an old 
picture, uh, in those in old days, we have St. John, we have different uh, orthopedic, uh, anesthetists, uh, medical doctor uh, in the team. And now uh, we have um, modified the team uh, to a different scale. We need to check the uh, location of the uh, medical room. Uh, this is the medical room we use in uh, Hong Kong Stadium. This is the Rugby 7 medical room. Uh, we have a dedicated nurse uh, in the room to, you know, to help us. And this is one of the uh, medical room back uh, in 2008 during the uh, question event in Hong Kong. This is a container. Uh, it's a temporary medical room. Uh, it was, but you can see if someone injured, they have to walk all the way upstairs to the medical room. So we, we, when we first saw it, we, we told the organizer, this is not uh, a good, uh, good uh, area to put the medical room. So they have to change the uh, medical room to a different site. The medical equipment, we, we need to make sure all the equipment are in working order. To check the, uh, the drugs, make sure they are not expired. Uh, check the uh, the battery if they are uh, still workable. This is the medical bag uh, I use in many sports events, and uh, I try to tear it down because this is about 15 kilograms. So every time when I to carry it, it's, it's like a weight training. And the medical bag we uh, we put airway breathing circulation and equipment in the back. Uh, the, this is the, uh, the, the circulation part and uh, we try to minimize the number of uh, fluid we carry. Uh, the dressing, we use a lot of uh, wound dressing material because we see a lot of a minor wound in the pitch. So this, these are the equipment we use most: uh, scissors, uh, bandage. The, uh, we don't use antiseptic solution that much. And on the pitch, we now uh, we use a lot of uh, distilled water. We open a bottle, a new bottle of distilled water to use it because they are sterile, and this is uh, very convenient. We don't have to carry antiseptic solution. I think the battery is one flat. One <laughs> yes, the risk management. One down. Uh, other important equipment we need is the, something to protect ourselves. Gloves is a must, you know, because we might uh, involve with uh, blood contaminated wound. Splint, splinting is uh, something we need to carry all the time because uh, any, any limb injury we can use it immediately and there are lights to carry, uh, triangular bandage and sand splint we use a lot. Uh, some life saving drugs is something we use during the resuscitation, touch wood, so far we haven't used this but uh, it is a mandatory to carry it around. And be careful with the uh, doping rules. But in the life-saving procedure, we don't think about the uh, doping issues. We give it, and then we can uh, apply the TUE afterward. The communication. Yeah, during uh, the event, uh, if there are 40,000 people in the stadium, it's so noisy. Uh, we cannot use our mobile phone or walkie-talkie. So what we do? We keep the uh, message short and clear, and we use a lot of hand signal. This is some of the hand signal we uh, we designed uh, years ago. This is our old, uh, own team signal. This is not international hand signal, by the way. Uh, in rugby, they have an international hand signal. Uh, they use different uh, uh, signs. So before the uh, 
Again, we need to communicate with ourselves, so what signal we are going to use. And we need to uh, talk to the people who are involved in the uh, event. Uh, this is not a clear uh, slide, uh, it's supposed to be white in the background. So we, need, we have all the people's uh, contact phone number. That is important. If something happens, we can communicate with them. As Charles in, in the risk management, uh, seven strategy, you know, one of the uh, uh, strategies how, uh, to communicate. And check all the necessary documents and medical records, evacuation plans and receiving hospital, disaster planning, environmental factors, and all these are important. And we need to confirm with the receiving hospital if anything happened. Uh, I'm lucky, Lucy is with me, she normally deal with all this. <laughs> and before the, before the uh, event, we need to train. Preparation is important. Uh, we need to train the whole team. You know, we need to know uh, uh, the, the procedure, we have protocol. If something happened, what to do is, uh, we need to prepare for that. This is a uh, video, I'd love to show it to you. This is something they have never trained before. So, some of you have seen it. It's a very old video. <laughs> This is a UEFA Cup. It's an important European match, as you, some of you might know. That's what happens if you are not trained properly. And this is quite reason. This is a, a friendly match, China against Japan. This might cause a... It's a Chinese player. They might drop it deliberately. So <laughs> it might start the uh, Chinese and Japanese war very soon. <laughs> Proper training is important. So we, spe we, we spend a lot of time training our medical team yeah, just to uh, uh, prepare something like the, uh, not like this. Mm. We need to know the risk, so we need to understand the potential injuries. In rugby, you know, we have we see a lot of uh, uh, head injury, limb injury. Uh, we need to understand, so we need to uh, prepare ourselves. This is uh, a different risk. Uh, if, if someone uh, involved in motor uh, cycling events, uh, how to remove a helmet, we need, a, we need to train, uh, train before we, we, we uh, 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 provide a service. And this is a, a very good example. Uh, this is from 2008 uh, equestrian event. One of the uh, riders, she, she involved in the cross country event. She's have this specially made uh, protective vest. It's made of magnesium uh, case. Uh, they need special uh, screw driver to unlock this vest. Uh, so she need to inform us, uh, saying that uh, she has this special vest, and if if she, if she got injured, we need to know how to remove this vest. So we need to prepare the uh, uh, Allen key, especially uh, prepare key to remove the screw on the on, on, on this vest. So all the preparation is done, and the team should be ready. And be prepared is the uh, rule of the thumb. During the match, 
we provide the medical care at the pitch side and inside the medical room and we support the team doctor or the team physio with on-site medical issue. Uh, we need to understand the special rules. Uh, again, I use the uh, blood bin uh, in rugby. In, in rugby, we have 15 minutes to, to stop the bleeding. So if a rugby player injured himself with a bleeding wound, we can do a suture inside the medical room and stop the bleeding and they can go back to, uh, to play again. On site, we need to be aware of the, uh, the mechanism of injury because we need to make a diagnosis quickly. If we can make a diagnosis quickly, we know how to manage it. So the mechanism of injury is important. On site, uh, the scene safety is important. We want we don't want to become part one of the uh, uh, the victim ourselves. So we need to uh, be careful. We, if we need to make sure if the match is stopped before we go out, and when to go out. Sometimes uh, some games the referee stop the whole game, and the player uh, and, and the medical personnel can can go out. But in some uh, matches, uh, some, some sports like rugby, the team physio, uh, they can go out without the, uh, uh, the referee stopping the game. Or in like uh, equestrian, uh, the marshal has to stop the whole uh, event because uh, also stop the horse coming to the, uh, in, uh, the, the, uh, the accident uh, site before the medical personnel can go into the, uh, the field. And how to approach the athlete? So we have to know our own uh, route. We have to decide how, how are we going to get into the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the sport field. Sometimes we have to be escorted by uh, some designated officials. We use this protocol. D, R, A, B, C, D, E. D stands for danger, R stands for res uh, the response of the injured player. Danger is, as I mentioned earlier, the scene safety is important. Uh, if it is not uh, safe, we don't go in. We wait until it is clear, and then we go into the pitch. How about the response of the injured player? I'm sure if you have seen a, a, a injured player, if they are screaming and shouting, you know they are not serious. But if they are lying flat, not moving, then we have to run faster because we don't know whether they airway, breathing or circulation. I'm not, uh, we don't know whether it is secure or not. The on-site management, we use the principle of the uh, basic life support or immediate care support. Uh, we use the primary survey, we do a focal examination, make sure uh, we, under, uh, we know what the uh, injured uh, area is, we focus on the injured part. Yeah. And then we see whether we can manage it quickly and we have to think about the definite, uh, definitive care. We need to be quick. Uh, we need to uh, make a decision quickly and give the treatment quickly. We need to decide if we can do the treatment on the pitch or in the medical room or if they need to go to the hospital straight away. And we need to do, give as little interruption as possible. And we need to treat the player as quickly and safely as possible. And we have to decide whether the player can continue or they have to uh, disqualify from the game. And sometimes we have to use some uh, uh, 
uh, investigation. We are lucky in uh, rugby seven. We have a radiologist uh, who is uh, specialized in muscle skeletal uh, screening, and he can do the ultrasound uh, in the stadium. So we can uh, give more information about the uh, the injury. We can decide whether they can uh, continue or not. So if we decide, have, uh, we need to transport the uh, send the uh, athletes to the hospital. We need to decide uh, what kind of uh, transportation mode, and we need to stabilize the patient first, and then choose the receiving hospital, which hospital we are going. Of course, if it is a major uh, incident, we need to send the uh, athletes to the closest hospital. If they are not urgent, we can consider, you know, they can take their own taxi, send them to the uh, uh, private hospital or uh, government hospital. If someone injured and we are not sure whether they can continue or not, we use this. If in doubt, sit them out. We don't know whether the injury will cause any further harm. So if, if we are not sure, you know, stop them playing. Uh, we apply these three, uh, three pin principles. If they can uh, play the sport effectively and relatively pain-free, and uh, if they are safe from further in injury, uh, they can continue to play. Otherwise, you know, we will ask them to, to stop. This is one of the uh, very good uh, Example, uh, Wang Wanyu. She she was one of the uh, Hong Kong top uh, cyclists, and uh, back in 2010, she had a, a big crash in one of the race, and uh, unfortunately, she she fractured two ribs. If he, uh, if she was uh, stopped, continued to uh, complete in the uh, race she won't be able to get the silver medal. So the decision on return to play is, is, is very difficult. So after the match finish, uh, it's happy we all of us have a, a glass of uh, beer. But apart from that, uh, we should have some uh, debriefing uh, session. Uh, we need to, you know, discuss you know, what happened uh, during the, uh, the the event, and we need to review the uh, in the medical or injury records, and uh, we might comply uh, some statistics. See if they give us any uh, data uh, to see the trend of the injuries, and we need to review any uh, follow-up case. And sometimes we need to refer the uh, athletes to a specialist for further treatment and review the protocol for next year. So this is the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, I know the question, the Q&A will be safe until yeah. the end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.